Hi, friends. I'm Peggy Creighton with So Powerful, and I'm the regional coordinator for Georgia and the area manager for the Southeast. And today, I'm so excited to tell you about our new In the Hoop purse design. And you'll be able to make this cute little purse with all the design in the hoop. And so stay tuned. I'm gonna tell you all about how to get it, how to do it, what you'll need. Okay, friends. So today we're going to be talking about how to make the in the hoop purse. Um, and this I should note is the beginner purse or the 2018 purse pattern. And it's designed for the larger hoops. But we're going to, um, down the road, we're going to have it for the smaller hoops from five by seven and up. So stay tuned because you'll be able to make this too in your smaller hoop. Just uh, today you can see how it's done in the larger hoop and know that the smaller hoop version is coming very soon. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is to download this pattern off the sopowerful.org website. These are the complete instructions or how to do your hooping, all the step-by-step, -step, their pictures, their color charts, everything you need to know is in this PDF pattern. But we're going to go over a few of the highlights today so that you can have a visual for how some of these things are done. And hopefully that will make it much easier for you. Okay, but first let's talk about some of the supplies that you're going to need in order to make this beautiful purse. All right, so the first thing that I would recommend is that you start with a full bobbin. That's so important because you wouldn't want to run out of thread halfway through a design. So always check and be sure you have a full bobbin when you start. The next thing that you're going to want to have on hand is some uh, very sharp embroidery scissors. Now, it doesn't have to be this kind. But I like these because they're curved and they make it very easy to dig in around some of the edges. And a lot of what you're doing is going to be very similar to applique. And these little scissors are great for applique. So if you can find some that have these little curved um, edges, these would be great. All right, another thing you might wanna have on, on hand is a chopstick. <laughs> this one I, I got from a Chinese restaurant and it's great because when you're turning your pieces, this little pointy end or even the little square end helps you turn those out very easily. So I always keep this there and it's one, it's like that um, one of those tools that embroiderers use to hold things down so they don't have their fingers near the needle and it works great for that too. So I highly recommend a chopstick. And if it breaks, they're easy to replace. All right, another little thing you might want to have is a glue stick because in some cases you're going to be floating your fabric and the little glue stick can help you um, just secure the edges. If you don't want to get it all gummed up, and this is a washable glue stick, by the way, then you can use some masking tape also or just some uh, regular transparent tape works pretty well too. And then one other thing that I mentioned in the supplies is pinking shears, because once you have made your in the hoop pieces, you want to take them out and trim, and the pinking shears are just great for that, trimming around the edges and, and um, finishing off your seam allowances. And also, since the purse needs to be interfaced, I highly recommend some interfacing. This is a fusible interfacing that you can use in place of stabilizer. Uh, I don't recommend it for the embroidered uh, purse pieces, but for the ones that aren't embroidered, the ones you are just stitching out in the hoop, this is great and it's a time saver and it saves on your stabilizer. And speaking of saving on stabilizer, I'm a big believer in not wasting that glorious stuff. So here is a little tip. And I know this is kind of an ugly piece, but I wanted you to see that I actually reused my stabilizer. And um, I recommend using the wash away stabilizer for this purse. And if you use the kind that I've used, this is a woven mesh type wash away, then you can uh, save the scraps that you cut off the edges when you're finished and you can sew it back together. And of course, once it's washed away, those are just threads that are there and they don't hurt anything. And that way you save on stabilizer as well. So I highly recommend that. 
Now, one thing about the In the Hoop verse, you can make all of the pattern pieces for this 2018 pattern in the hoop, but you cannot make the strap. And so you can make the strap separately, or you can just use purchased webbing. And this is purchased webbing. It's one inch wide, 52 inches long. I purchased it from uh, one of our great supporters, Home so, And of course we get a discount from them. So I highly recommend using the purchased webbing um, with this purse. And then if you want to quilt your flap, and that is certainly an option with this pattern, then you'll want to have some batting on hand. And this is just a couple of pieces of pre-cut batting that you can use. And I'll talk about that a little later, how you can um, hoop your batting. All right, so let's get started and we'll talk about each of the different steps uh, in this pattern. And I'll highlight the things that might be confusing to you, but remember the full instructions are in the PDF and it's a little bit long, so we couldn't possibly go over all of that in one video but I'll try to highlight the most important things that you'll need to know. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is begin with some pre-cut pieces. And uh, if you notice this piece that I have here, this is almost the same size as a fat quarter. So if you prefer, you can use fat quarters and then there's no pre-cutting. You'll want to iron them, of course, but otherwise there's nothing to do except to hoop your fabric. All right, and um, the first step that we're going to do is we're going to make, I just happen to have one here, this little bonus file, which is the lining for the flap, okay? And I'm gonna hold up the pattern piece. You can get a visual for the paper pattern piece. And you can see, if you can see the stitches here that this in the hoop piece stitches exactly the same as the paper pattern piece. But the benefit of using this in the hoop piece is that it has the logo, the So Powerful logo. And that looks really cute when you lift up your purse flap and your logo is there. So if you'd like to have that, this would be a great file to start with because it's the lining for the flap. And it's very quick and easy. You're going to hoop your fabric and um, you're going to stitch the outline just like this. And then you're going to stitch the logo and take it out and set it aside so that you can sew this onto the back of the flat piece, which is the next piece. All right, so we'll move on to the front flat piece. All right, and this pretty little front flat piece is stitched in two parts in the hoop. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to hoop your stabilizer. And then if you want to have your batting in there, like I chose to do with this one, you're going to place a piece of batting down on the hoop. All right, and then you're going to transmit the design to the hoop and it's going to stitch a placement stitch to show you where to place your fabric. So after it stitched the placement, you're going to put your first fabric piece down, which happens to be this floral one here, and it's going to stitch around the upper part here. All right, then you'll put another piece of batting down, or if you happen to use a large enough one to cover the whole thing, you don't need this extra piece, but you stick your second piece down, and you're going to stick the bottom part of the flap on top of the first piece, and upside down. It's a little tricky, but when you do that, the next um, seam that you're going to stitch in the hoop goes right across here and finishes this seam for you. So you can just turn it down and then it'll stitch around the outline like that. That's the cutting line. And then it'll stitch this pretty little design for you on the flap. So when you're finished and you remove this, if you just cut along the edge here, this is actually the pattern piece that we just looked at a moment ago. This is the flat pattern piece, just like this. And I have a little edge on it, but you cut right on the stitch line. It's exactly the same as the paper pattern piece. Now, if you want to finish the whole thing in the hoop, before you remove this from the hoop, you're going to line up your lining piece. 
And you'd have to cut this one out along the stitch line here as well. But you're going to take it and lay it down on top of the stitch lines, just like that. And the final stitch in the hoop is going to stitch the seam allowance all the way around so that when you remove it, all you have to do is turn this right side out and give it a press and your flap is finished. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside for the moment because we'll come back to it in just a minute when we complete the back. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the inside pocket, all right? Now this one is already stitched out so you can't see the inside too well. But you're going to hoop your stabilizer and you're going to float a little piece of fabric for this one. And for that one, you can use the, the tape that I mentioned. You can use the glue stick to hold your fabric down. You can use masking tape, all right? But you're simply going to hoop your stabilizer, put your hoop into the machine, and you're going to stitch a placement stitch onto the stabilizer. Or if you want to save on thread, you can do what I do. And I just um, trace the design without any thread. And I stop the machine and mark the corners with a pencil. And then I just put my fabric down on top of those corners. And then I do my stitching of the pocket. So you're going to stitch it in three um, steps. You're going to stitch the back piece. You're going to stitch the little message that says stitch with love. And you're going to float another piece on top of that and stitch the seam allowance so that when you finish and remove this from the hoop and trim the excess, all you have to do is turn your pocket right side out. And this is where your handy dandy chopstick comes in. And you can just poke out those corners with your, your sharp end, just like so. And then when you go straight to your ironing board, it's so easy to press this where it looks nice and finished. One little tip, if you use the pinking shears, it's going to make it easier to press out these corners because when you pink the corners, then it's like a little fan and the fabric sort of collapses into the corner and makes a nice crisp corner when you've gone to turn it. So there's your little pocket and you can just tuck in the opening here and if you want to you can finish it with a little piece of fusible um, hem tape but you don't have to because once it's pressed and you pop it down onto the lining it's going to stitch all around that and you won't even know there was an opening all right so i'm going to set this aside and pretend that i pressed it and i'm going to pull up my lining now and i have here the pattern piece for the lining so that you can see, once again, that this is the exact same size. Okay. And just like the pocket, the lining is made in three steps. So the first thing is to hoop your stabilizer and to transmit your design and just stitch a placement line. And then you're going to float your fabric onto the hoop. And if you need to hold it down, you can tape it or, or temporary temporarily glue it down. And then you're going to stitch the lines that secure that piece. All right. Then you're going to stitch a placement line for the pocket, which is inside here. And after you stitch the placement lines, you'll take your little pocket that you've already finished and pressed really well, and you'll lay it on top of those placement lines. And then you're going to stitch again and if it's perfectly lined up, it'll just stitch that pocket just in the right place with a nice little line all around and an opening at the top. And then the final step is going to be to float the, the other side of the lining and you'll stitch the seam allowance down either side and the bottom, leaving an opening at the bottom for turning. Okay, and of course it's open at the top. So that's your purse lining. And then we'll set that aside. All right, the next piece, it's optional whether you want to hoop this because this is the upper back piece. And it's such a small piece, it's very easy to trim that by hand. 
but you can see the pattern piece lines up perfectly with the in the hoop piece. If you want to do it in the hoop, the design just stitches the outline of that piece. And once it's trimmed up, you see it matches this perfectly. And you would need to cut right on the stitch lines there to have the exact size for the back. All right, so that's the upper back. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch the lower back. And again, here's the pattern piece for the lower back. And you can see that the in the hoop piece matches it perfectly. I just haven't trimmed the edges of it. So you're going to once again hoop your stabilizer. Notice that I've, I've uh, used my piece stabilizer for this. So you're going to hoop your stabilizer and you'll transmit your design. You'll stitch a placement line that shows you where to place your fabric. And you place your fabric on the stabilizer. Stitch again to stitch the outline of the back piece. Now the cool thing about doing the back in the hoop is once you've stitched this part, you can complete the entire back with the flap and the upper back. So the next thing that you will do is take your flap piece and just pretend that this is all sewn together. All right, and you're going to look at the upper line here, which I would trim actually, but you're going to match the upper line of the flat piece, which also would be trimmed with the upper edge here of the back and you'll just center it. And then you're going to place the upper back and you're going to stitch this seam right here. And so when you take it out of the hoop, your whole entire back is completed with the lower back, the upper back, and the flap in place, all right? And all you need to do is trim the excess off the edges, just like you had made it with the paper pattern, all right? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to start the front. The front has two pieces. So the, the large pocket that goes on the front is the very same piece as the back that we just stitched. And so you just float your fabric or float your stabilizer, put your fabric down on the placement line, stitch around it, okay? But the, the interesting thing is that this piece is lined, okay? So instead of putting your flap there, what you're going to do is put your lining piece on top of your back piece to make the pocket. And you're just going to stitch that same seam for the lining. And when you take it out and turn it, you have the pocket for the front. All right. So then we stitch the main front piece. And once again, we hoop our piece. Notice that I've reused some stabilizer here. And I've already trimmed that off because I reused that piece as well. But you're going to hoop your stabilizer. Um, stitch your placement lines, put your fabric down on the placement lines and stitch the front piece. Then you're going to lay your front pocket, matching the side and the bottom perfectly. Lay that down and stitch again and it's going to stitch the pocket in place. And then you'll go back and grab that back piece, line those up as well, Stitch one more time and you're going to stitch the side and the bottom so that the back and the front are all stitched together in the hoop. All right, and now you have an almost finished purse. And this is what it's going to look like. So you see I've got the back. Oops, sorry about that. I've got the back with the flap and the upper back. I've got the front with the large pocket. These side seams and the bottom seam were stitched in the hoop. But now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch the box corners like this. And I'm going to stitch the webbing to the sides. And when I stitch the webbing to the sides, I stitch it multiple times to make it very secure. And then I also stitch 
several times across the top of the webbing so that it doesn't unravel. And now I'm ready to take my lining piece and line my purse. Now this is the lining piece that we stitched in the hoop just a minute ago. We've got our pocket, we stitched our side seams, we stitched our bottom with the opening. I've trimmed it up with my pinking shears, but the one thing I couldn't do in the hoop was stitch the box corners. So I'm gonna go back to my sewing machine and stitch the box corners of my lining. And then I'm ready to line my purse. And this is so easy. I'm going to just simply slip the lining onto the purse. And a little trick is if you roll up the flap in the back, then the lining just slides right past that, just like so. And because you have an opening at the bottom, you can slip your strap through there, just like that. Get your sides all lined up. I'm gonna just clip this all the way around. Now I'm ready to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch the upper edge here to secure the lining to the purse. And the final step is going to be, I'll just fold my purse and pull it out through the opening at the bottom, turn it right side out. And then I'm going to stitch around the upper edge here in a pretty top stitch or a decorative stitch to finish my purse. And so that's how easy it is to make your purse in the hoop. Thanks for watching. Okay, friends, so now that you know how to make this in the hoop purse, I want to tell you something special. Um, there's a bonus design, and it's mentioned right here on the PDF for this um, pattern. Be sure you pick up this PDF because it has all the instructions that you'll need all the color charts, it has um, pictures and so forth. And this is available for download off the website. But what I wanted to share with you is the little bonus design that anyone even with a four by four hoop can make. And it's, um, it's a stitched with love patch. So you can put it on anything you make. It can go on any of your purses. It can go on uh, gifts that you make, quilts, aprons, toys, whatever you wanna do with it. It's just a little bonus. Um, so I hope that you'll go and look at the pattern and download this and download the freebie as well and use it as much as you want. Enjoy. Hi friends, I'm back and I have a surprise for you. And the surprise is that we have uh, listed on our SoPowerful.org website the In the Hoop purse pattern that comes with a purse flap and a bonus match. But in the months to come, we want you to visit that site again and again and again. And so we're going to be offering more flaps for you to try. And that way you'll be able to vary the flaps that you use with your In the Hoop purse or you can just make the flap and you use it on your regular purse pattern, either the beginner or the intermediate purse pattern, it's interchangeable. And so we hope that you will download this in the hoop purse pattern and come back in a month to get the new flap design and keep coming back month after month for a new design. There should be a total of 12, so it'll take you through the next year. So enjoy.